Hey everybody, this is Ace Cosplay here, and this is Behind the Mask Episode 3, revisitation of an older video of mine, Stormtrooper Transformation, where I put on this lovely Stormtrooper armor, and this time actually tell you about it, about different parts, how they all go together, and any changes that have been made to this, because this has been my trusty companion for nearly seven years now, this armor, and it's gone through a few changes, there's quite a few breakages in it, and it's going to need to be put in retirement soon and get a whole new set. But before that happens, it's still got some life left in it, still some events it can do. So I'm going to take you through how it all goes on and uh, show you guys how cool only one of these things is. So the first thing you need, the basic thing, is the undersuit. Uh, this for me is a two-piece thermal. Some stormtroopers have uh, one full body piece which zips up the back. But I go for this because it's simple, it's comfortable, it's the one that came with the costume that the guy had. So it is it is a male undersuit because it's got the thing on the trousers, even though I am female. But you don't see that under the armour, so it doesn't really matter. And uh, it's nice and light. It does get a little bit warm in convention halls with it being a thermal but it's served me well these past few years, so this is what I keep wearing. Now the next thing to go on is this. This is, looks like a mess, because it is, because it's all worn away and all the elastic's coming out, but this is uh, an elasticated belt which goes around the middle, which the thigh piece is attached to. Again, people have different variations of what they use for this. They use a proper belt with different attachments. Uh, some people can connect the thigh pieces straight to the stomach, but I use uh, a waistband for mine. So next you've got your thigh armour pieces. Uh, you've got the left side and you've got the right side. I've got some damage on the armour pack on mine, which has been there for a long time. And on the inside you can see some bits of hot glue and foam that's been left over from uh, having sponges glued in there to help me sit on my legs better over the years, which was a tip given to me uh, by one of my friends uh, who's in the Nordic Garrison. So if anyone's got a new set of armour and they're wondering how to make certain parts more comfortable, stick some sponge in it. Uh, simple, cheap and uh, comfortable so you can see how things fit better and yeah, nice and easy. Now to put them on, even easier. Depending which leg they go on, slide your foot in, or at least with mine, some troopers may have a split up the back that they can put it in. and. The elasticated belt attaches to fasteners on the inside of the leg. There you go. One leg section. Okay, next part is the boots. Now again, there's lots of different variations for trooper boots, but these are mine. These are actually fairly recent in the whole stream of things. I had several uh, boots before I got these. Um, but these are actually a size too big for me as I couldn't get them a size smaller because these were actually bought for me. So they're a size 7 not a size 6 and uh, to fit them under my uh, leg armour they've had to be cut up and glued back together so they've got a little bit of a, an awkward shape at the back but once you've got the leg armour on it's not as noticeable and uh, they're not too bad for comfort. So you've just got zips on the side and with these, I might wear some thicker socks just so my feet don't slide about in them so much. And awkwardly hobble into them when you've already got leg armor on. It's the ultimate balance test. And you got your stormy boots. And you got your lower leg armour. Again, these are certain legs. This one's the right one, this one's the left one. Now my left one has got a knee plate that's been screwed in. Uh, as you can see, oh, I don't know if you can, just underneath there, that's uh, a bit where the uh, old one had to be uh, dremeled off. It was a hasty repair getting this done. And uh, there's just some foam on the inside so the uh, the screws don't dig in so much, but again, it's just something that had to be done and you learn over the years what to do and what not to do with armour, so on the next kit I'll know uh, how to fix my uh, knee plate another way. And again, these just go on, velcroed at the back, slide over your leg and over the boots. 
pull it shut, Velcro attaches to the back and you've got your little leg on. Okay, next we've got the stomach armour, the cod piece and the belt. The belt is separate from these two pieces uh, with the cod piece attached. As you can see with a little bit that's come off here which I'll need to repair. Uh, elastic and a bit of a hot glue. The belt is attached by push fasteners on the front. See those attach just in the sides here where that little rivet is. The holster on the side and the canvas belt is originally uh, my belt was made out of the same plastic as this but as you can see on the front there is significant cracking so that had to be replaced by a, a white leather one and then eventually by a canvas belt. Some troopers do have the back section in two parts as well. They normally cut around here but I've found mine's better just staying in one piece so I've never cut it up. It probably helps mobility a little bit more but I found it's uh, probably not going to be much more manoeuvrable with a cut in there so I've just left it as one solid piece. Alright, put it on. These two pieces of elastic over here. Now you can tell this was made for someone taller than I am. So what I have to do is cross it over. It brings it up a little bit more because I'm not I'm not that short for a stormtrooper before the comments flood in because they're bound to because it is on every other video. And uh, there's also a fastener on the bottom of the cod piece here. So this is the most awkward part of putting it together. You've kind of got to stretch through, find the bit at the back, find the front bit and just try and get it to attach and uh, you've got to pop your crotch together. It's a little bit awkward when you're dressing in front of uh, other people at a convention but I think cosplayers are quite used to that by now. You can see it's attached around the side via elastic again. Pull the armour up, pull the belt up, and it's attached via Velcro. So it's tight enough around the middle that it'll stay up. And then just move the holster up around to the left side where it's supposed to be. Because the original Stormtroopers were actually left-handed, if you watched uh, New Hope, especially uh, the opening scene. Stormtroopers are left-handed, so I consider myself to be a proper Stormtrooper because I am in fact left-handed. Okay, the next piece I put on is this, which is the neck ring. Again, there's many different variations of this that people use. Uh, because uh, the person I got this from actually made his suit, I think the body parts were made uh, from moulds that FX uses, so just your standard uh, cheap Stormtrooper ones. And uh, the helmet is a stunt helmet, which is why people have spotted there's two slightly different shades of white on the costume, because the helmet's actually a really nice, decent one, not just a cheap mould. Uh, and uh, obviously this plastic is different to what the helmets use. And again, people do like proper screen accurate versions of these using different materials but this one just a bit of cloth and some leather and on the inside of the feel there's like a little bit of metal piping that gives it the shape and keeps it rigid and this just goes over around your neck and uh, if you have a working speaker system which I currently don't in the, ar in the armor it hides all your little ropes and all your wires they feed up into the helmet depending where you have stuff situated in your armour. Alright, this here is your chest plate and your back plate and the two shoulder straps. Again, some people do this differently. My shoulder straps are on using Velcro. Some people have theirs permanently affixed to the front and the back of their costumes. But I have seen some troopers who have had that have their shoulder pieces snap and because they're permanent it's a uh, 
hard to take it off and replace it with something else with ease. So uh, I've decided to keep mine like this and also it means I can take off the shoulder straps and uh, it's easier to pack this because I can just lie it all down and everything's all flat. Again, it's the front and the back are connected to your sides, again via elastic and the push fasteners. But my costume is covered in push fasteners. Again, some costumes uh, do it in Velcro. But again, the problem with Velcro that I've been told is uh, sometimes when you move about, you can hear the Velcro come apart, so you don't want to be moving and just have this constant ksh, ksh, ksh sound of the Velcro. And on the inside, you can just see there's two little Velcro parts there, because sometimes when I'm at conventions, uh, I have uh, an iPod stuck in there, as well as a speaker, which sometimes I also put on my belt so I can play music. Because I'm a fun-loving trooper, at heart, even though I'd love to be in a fan film and play a badass trooper, but um, at heart I just I just like to muck about and have fun. So it's quite easy to put on if you have it all in one little piece. Slide it on over your head. Got to do a little bit of feel work to find out where everything is. Can I find it? Yes, I can. There you go. There's your chest plate. Again, as you can see, doesn't matter how much I've grown over these past seven years, everything's still a little bit big for me. But once you get the rest of it on, it doesn't matter quite so much. So these are your shoulder bells and your upper arm pieces. For mine, there's push fasteners inside this bit here which means this part's attached and it attaches to the top of the bell here. So both are together and you don't have this trying to slide down your arm. And also there's a piece of elastic just across there, which means that if you're moving a little bit fast, you don't have the shoulder bell like constantly try to fly off your shoulder like that because I have seen in some fan films that some troopers don't have the strap there and uh, it's really distracting them looking like chickens running across the battlefield. But some people do have it and they do it in white elastic, but I find that looks even worse than black because it may seem less noticeable, but then it seems like you're trying to cover it up. And considering you've got lots of black parts that are on show in Stormtrooper armor, I think it makes sense just to have it as black. It just fits part of the costume. Now there are poppers right in the middle on the underside of my shoulder straps here. And again, each of these have their own side. So what I do first is I attach him to the underside, so it hangs like that. Some troopers do this before they put the chest on and they put it on like a t-shirt, but this is how I do it. So once you've got both of these on, slide your arms through. Bells and they're not trying to fly off and they fit comfortable and they move up and down your arm and this is actually probably the most comfortable section of the costume. Now this is an optional extra that I have for my suit and uh, I had wanted one for a while so I decided to pick it up. Uh, this is called a pauldron. Uh, this has sparked a bit of debate over my previous videos about people saying because I've got a pauldron that makes me a sand trooper. Uh, that is not necessarily true, even though sand troopers are the ones you usually see with pauldrons, these are just a declaration of rank. So I'm a stormtrooper, but this would show my rank. Now, to my knowledge, red is not an official rank colour in the Star Wars universe, but some have declared it to be medic. But red is my favourite colour, and I just really fancy having a red pauldron. So, um, in one of my groups, um, I'm ranked as commander, so I'm just going to say red is now commander, because red's my colour, and that's what's on my pauldron. This is normally easier if you have someone else putting it on for you, but I'm just going to have to make do. Just kind of put your head in it, and you've got two push fasteners on the side here. There you go. And you've got to try and get it around a sort of decent area of your neck ring, twist it round, and if I can reach it, you've got 
some straps which you can velcro together. Like I said, this is easier if someone else does it for you. But I've managed to put that on kind of okay. Again, um, do excuse my phone, it keeps going off on the side there. Uh, some troopers have bits of velcro here that just holds on the pauldron, but I occasionally don't wear this. Because again, everything's a little bit too big for me. So it, it slides around a bit, but as I occasionally don't wear it, because velcro is kind of hard to take off, I thought I'd just leave it as it is. Then you got your forearms. These are nice and easy for me. Just slip on like that. Again, they do have a left and right because for those who aren't, aren't as small as mine, there is velcro attachment. So obviously you've got the side that's glued here and then you've got the slightly bulkier velcro attachment. So I keep that on the bottom. So that defines which arms that these go on. And uh, as one of my friends who has worn this before found kind of funny because these are quite big, wondered how you get the forearms to stay on and the answer to that is by wearing the gloves and he thought it was kind of funny how the armour parts are kept on via just the force of having other armour parts. So you can tell how this is not really a very good set of armour for a battlefield and how the new Stormtrooper design is probably a lot more appropriate for that. Then we've got the gloves. Uh, most troopers use uh, like black kind of washing up gloves types of things so that goes up the arm and you can't see uh, any skin or anything but as I've cut a hole in my undersuit it doesn't matter if this come out because you can't see my wrist uh, but I have I did have those gloves but they got so uncomfortable and hot inside that I decided to stick with my nice shiny leather ones and uh, again there's push fasteners attached to the back which isn't always good for this costume because sometimes I find that if about and I bend my arm a certain way, that snaps off and then you kind of get your your hand piece just swiveling. Uh, again, most troopers actually have a just a strip of elastic that runs round so it literally just elasticates to the palm of the hand, uh, which I probably will do for my next set, but for my current set of armour I just keep it like this. Slide it on over your hand and just, just tuck it in to the arm bits. Uh, another part which is I guess optional is the uh, balaclava which you can wear and uh, I did wear this, I wear this pretty much every convention I go to. It's when my hair was longer so it's pretty much to cover up the hair because uh, you're portraying your character, you're essentially like a symbol and I think it's always a little bit of a shame when you see like other troopers and you can like see sort of part well parts of them underneath because it's like it breaks the illusion kind of because you, you never really see it in the film and uh, also one thing to point out that ref uh, I've forgotten the word for it I'm bad I'm bad at English today I keep forgetting the words but it's it's to do with black uh the front of my helmet as you can see in the mouth here the sections between like the little teeth I can try and hold it up to the light there you go, you can see, you can actually see straight through into the mask. Again, for different um, moulds of the helmet, these will either be solid or some people have gauze in them, but because mine are straight out holes in the right light, you'll actually be able to see my mouth underneath and you'll be able to see me. So I wear the balaclava and I keep my face covered. Again, it, it's just so it completes the whole look. It's not the most comfortable thing because sometimes it shifts under the helmet, but then again, the rest of this suit isn't comfortable, so you kind of get used to it. You, you don't really look very pretty at this stage, but no one's gonna see your face anyway. Then last of all, you got your bucket. Now, obviously, like I said, this is uh, a stunt helmet rather than the FX helmet, which is uh, what you'd normally get with a kit of this type. It's the nicer version. Uh, the speaker system I did have, these bits here, the oxygen filters, are actually little speakers, but then my speaker system stopped kind of working and uh, it did disillusion little kids when they found out I was a female trooper, so I, I just took it out. It's a lot easier than not having a microphone to fiddle about with um, in there as well. So you can see over the years, damage, 
scuffs, more scuffs. So he's a little bit, he's a little bit battle damage. Also, I don't have the movie accurate dark green lenses. I did have green lenses in this when I first got the armor, uh, but I decided I didn't like them because you could actually still see my eyes through them. And in flash photography, it looks really weird having a white and black suit and then having green lenses. Again, it's like Darth Vader's in the original Star Wars trilogy were actually dark brown. They weren't black. So I decided to go for a change, and actually if you look on the inside, you can see the lenses are actually blue. And on the outside, they're reflective. And uh, they have been in my helmet for quite a while, and like polish and stuff has got in there, so now when I wear this, my vision is even more blurry and restrictive. <laughs> than when I first got it and uh, on the inside some people have like proper little systems for having uh, their helmet comfortably put on their head like all kinds of different straps so it's measured to their head but uh, my method is sponges it's cheap and it works and it's incredibly comfortable well the sponge bit is anyway and uh, there are a few autographs on the inside like uh, that one there from uh, Jeremy Bullock who's Boba Fett who did that one for free because uh, I went up to him in, in my costume and I had the helmet off and he said give me that because uh, I was spoke to him for I, I kind of hang about with him for most of the day really and he signed it so that was very nice of him and as you see on the inside there's a lot of fiberglass it's just reinforced this so it's a thick tough helmet which is what you need when you go into battle you can't see anything out of it, which is also what you need when you're going into battle. They really didn't think this design through. You put this on, you kind of got to go sideways and then twist it. Now you might not be able to hear me when I put the helmet on, so I'm going to shout. Doing that does move the balaclava underneath, which is rather annoying. You're going to go down to swivel it back. You know what, I'll put up with it like that for the sake of the video, or I'll be here all day. And something that's not part of the costume, but something every stormtrooper needs, your blaster rifle. Again, as you can see, there's parts of it that are damaged, scuffed, it's been dropped a few times, but it's still in one piece. But I do love it, and it certainly looks the part. So that's it. That's your Stormtrip armor, and my lenses are already fogging up. So I'm going to take this off before I get really, really hot. This is what happens to the balaclava after you take it off. Okay, so that's it for the Stormtrip armor. That's it, that's how you get it on. The only bit I didn't put on today was my O2 canister on the back of the belt because it's quite heavy and it does have a tendency to fall off sometimes so I will not be taking that with me to the event tomorrow but as you can see there's bits of dark curl which it attaches onto there again some people wear it some people don't and there's also argument whether it's an O2 canister or a thermal detonator I've always referred to it as an O2 canister but I, I don't know which one is canon maybe both okay so last rundown of the Stormtrooper armor because I know I'm going to get asked these questions uh, where did I get it from? Uh, like I said, this was made by uh, a guy on eBay. This was just a one-off, as far as I know. And uh, I got it for £600, which some people may say is a lot of money for um, some plastic. But it's not just plastic, uh, considering that uh, this would have to be... You'd probably have to buy the moulds and then vacuum form all the pieces and uh, get all the raw materials together, because this did come with a lot of extras and repair material that I could get for this uh, costume, so it has allowed me to maintain it after uh, about nearly seven years of wearing the thing. So that's why I've got slightly different gloves, because it came with two pairs, all the undersuit. The only thing it didn't come with were the boots and the gun, so the helmet came with it. So if you buy things like the FX Stormtrooper armor kit, which is uh, a cheap kit, which is uh, 400 pounds, which is one of the cheapest ones you can get because it doesn't come with all the clothing extras and you do have to piece bits together and the helmet comes in kit form and isn't a very good one like this one but this one is, is a, a one-off helmet and I was very lucky to get it 
the helmet similar to mine are stunt helmets, but stunt helmets are you know a lot more expensive than the FX kits. But a lot of stormtroopers use the FX kits and they're pretty good for trooping about in lightweight, uh, again depending on which lenses you can use in them, you can see out of them probably a lot better than you can see out of mine. And yeah, this is my pride and joy. And uh, my next armor set I'm gonna get, I would like to make the uh, episode 7 armor myself, I'd like to try my hand at that, but the next version of this armor I would like to get is called the Shepparton armor set, uh, which is made by the guy, I believe this is correct, made by the guy who did the original molds for the New Hope uh, Stormtrooper armor, which is nice, that means it's movie accurate. As you can see, obviously, mine's not so movie accurate, and the helmet does contrast a little bit to the body armor. And the helmet, I do believe, if I look at my eye lens, yeah, is actually uh, Empire Strikes Back, rather than New Hope. Do you know, do you know how I know? You see, you see the eye here, you can see there's not the straight line at the bottom bit there. You've got the wonky eye, which is the, the little hint that this is a, a Empire mold because uh, the Empire Strikes Back troopers had wonky eyes on one side. So uh, there you go, we got, we got the wonky eye and none of us troopers fix it because it's a beloved little detail that's in the film. And then for anyone wondering where I got the blaster from, the blaster came from a website called Doopy Doos. You really don't expect a website with that name to carry such things as Star Wars weaponry. But they do. Uh, there are. Oh, my chin keeps getting caught in my neck ring. There are several versions of this blaster. At least there were when I got this, and I got this several years ago, and I haven't checked the website since. But when I got this, there were several versions of this blaster. Again, higher or lower in price, depending which versions you get. Some have a movable stock made out of different materials. This one, I believe, was somewhere between 60 and 80 pounds. Uh, and it's just one solid piece, there's no movable bits, are uh, cast out of resin, really nice cast, nice and smooth, you can see I've roughed it up a little bit, and uh, it was, it's very sturdy, this has survived drops from like up here onto solid concrete and nothing smashed off, the only bit that was broken was this bit here, which you can see there is the little reload bit broken by actor Fraser Hines who I went to get an autograph from. He wanted to see the gun, thought it moved, broke it off. And so yeah, I fixed it and then I put this into storage and then it broke off again and I can't find it. So uh, a new gun may also be in order for me. But that's it guys, the camera's running out of battery so uh, I should wrap this up. If my eye line seems a little funny in this video it's because I've been looking at the viewfinder the whole time to make sure I'm still in frame with this big clunky suit. But I hope you guys enjoyed. That was essentially Stormtrooper Transformation version 2. Have uh, a good day, uh, be safe, and as always, may the force be with you.